we can fairly easily get into selenium toxicity, you know, especially if we make a mixing error or if an animal's usually on multiple supplements is where this happens, where it's on several different supplements, all of them contain selenium, and we can uh, get over that two parts per million uh, threshold and cause toxicity. Uh, in areas where selenium toxicity occurs, uh, you'll see reference to blind staggers, and that's where if the animal eats a lot of those selenium accumulating plants or uh, suddenly ingested large amounts of selenium or gets an overdose of an injection of selenium, uh, they'll show blindness, it can show some ataxia or unsteady gait, uh, and some neurologic signs like head pressing. Uh, they can also have sweating, colicky signs, and animals can actually die with a selenium toxicity. So they tend to show blindness and kind of this ataxia, thus named uh, blind staggers. And alkali disease is more of a chronic selenium toxicity. And remember back when we were first talking about uh, soils, those alkaline soils are more likely to be high in selenium. So even back in the 1800s, it was recognized on alkaline soils that you're more likely to have selenium toxicity. Even some people have blamed uh, Custer's defeat at the at Little Bighorn on his horses having uh, selenium toxicity uh, and not being able to use his horses. Uh, but what what selenium does when it's toxic is it'll actually begin to compete with sulfur pathways in the horse and you know about sulfur you know it's important for hair growth and so what happens in these horses is they'll lose their hair especially their mane and tail uh, you can see abnormal hoof growth they can have some really overgrown hooves they can slough their hooves like a horse with severe laminitis and they can get hoof crack so the, the main signs that we see with alkali disease are going to be hair loss kind of poor hair coat uh, poor skin and then usually changes in the hooves and yeah, more common in those areas uh, where uh, the selenium accumulator plants occur or where soils are uh, highly alkaline and low rainfall. And for selenium toxicity, on the right here I have some pictures. I want to show you some of these uh, selenium accumulator plants. Again, if you live in areas where these occur, if you see these plants, you know that that's a, that soil is high in selenium. And certain of these plants will only grow if there's high selenium. So you know, in these uh, areas, kind of in the middle of the country, where there, where these are found, you know, it's uh, important to look for these. Um, another thing that's important to avoid selenium toxicity is to only use injectable selenium uh, supplements as needed. And you know, you, generally one dose is going to be safe at the recommended dose. We want to make sure if we use those in animals, we want to at least know that they have uh, conditions that we know are selenium responsive or due to selenium deficiency. So we want to use those judiciously. Again, animals that eat accumulator plants uh, can run into problems because these plants can accumulate selenium much, much greater than what's in the soil. So it doesn't take much of these plants to be consumed by the animal to have uh, some problems. And there's been one report of uh, in, during drought conditions where animals were poisoned by alfalfa hay. It was believed what happened there is that because of the drought, the alfalfa plants had to put their roots deeper into the soil and they were able to pick up some more selenium than they normally would have. Uh, again, that's just one isolated report. When we think about selenium toxicity, it's usually going to be due to overdosage or animals that eat these accumulator plants. Now, selenium toxicity, and we talked about this earlier, one of the most important things is to look at the supplements that the horse gets and always recommend whatever possible just to use one supplement because then it's, it's easier to control for the horse uh, not getting excessive amounts of trace minerals. And so uh, there have been some cases of selenium toxicity where a horse got several different supplements. Each of those contained selenium in low amounts, but with enough uh, supplements we were able to reach toxic levels so again try and stick with one supplement you know read the label know why you're given that supplement and understand the label and follow the label instructions so just have illustrated that here at the bottom this nice horse and um, and one of our uh, nice pieces of art here for the web games were these uh, horse statues but just trying to show don't make it complicated just try and keep things as simple as possible 
and try and uh, stick with one supplement. 